Okay, hello everyone. This is going to be a commentary of my recent world record I got in Blasphemous Any Person Glitched. Uh, I'll just go over and do a commentary and explain the strats and what the glitches are. Because I have a feeling that over a couple of years uh, we kind of lost uh, what was the Any Person routing and how it worked and why uh, do we do such strats. Since I've been... there has not been many active runners on the category. I, because there is a, such a new route that is uh, completely different and that can go even under the 14, 13 minute mark, uh, I think it might be really interesting to go over the strats and what we do. So first of all, uh, we start from uh, an empty file. Um, we have everything empty, but as you can see, what's really important is that you pay close attention to the bottom of the screen. This is uh, my input display. So unfortunately, I hope the um, Twitch uh, replay bar will disappear because it kind of bo bothers uh, watching stuff. But um, what's important is that I have my keyboard on the left and I have my controller on the right. I will switch from keyboard to controller uh, because it just helped me uh, to the inputs, whether it be for FCC, for mashing. I have discovered that mashing sometimes is faster than regular mashing on uh, on the gamepad. So yeah, I'll go over. So the first thing is intro consent skip, which might be one of the most important glitches in the run, say it's like, um, I'd say about a minute, because you will, so what happens, um, pay a close attention to my input, you'll see that uh, I will be holding um, this button, which is uh, the button I've mapped to open the map, which can allow me to open the option menu, uh, which can allow me then to go back to the main menu, which is super important. We'll be, going, we'll be uh, using the menu a lot in this run. Uh, a lot of the most broken glitches are uh, relevant to menu storage, Coroutine storage, uh, coroutine launching instance in the instances of the game outside of our save file and reloading stuff. So, I'll be launching the game and uh, you will see that as soon as I enter the game, I am pressing the menu. And now you see that I will be doing a lot of small inputs. So what I'm doing is that I have the map open while the cutscene is playing in the background. During the, the, this time, I will be going in the options, I will deactivate the tutorial because this is 1.0.6 and every time you start a save file in 1.0.6, the tutorials are always active. So I make sure to deactivate that, otherwise at many spots in the run I will have some weird, some splash screen going over the screen and it takes 2-3 to three seconds to remove them from uh, the... Um, to remove them from your screen and just go on. Whereas if you deactivated the tutorial, they would be much, much faster. So that's what I do. And after doing that, I still go into my blind menu. I go back to the main menu and I recharge the game. So I will have the game loaded with the cutscene playing in the background. So I can just skip the cutscene and take full control over the penitent one. So as you can see, I'm already dashing. Okay, and then it's just the regular covent. Um, one more thing to describe is the timer you see. The important timer is the bottom one. The bottom one is the timer with the load removal. You will see that I'm into a loading when you have the miracle sigil uh, on the bottom right corner, so right here. Right here, this timer, the bottom one will be paused and the upper one will continue. The upper one is just an indicative timer um, and displays the real time going on in the room. Why did we do that? It's because um, in-game timer relative to the, the loads and stuff uh, is dependent of the machine you're using. So if you will be running Blasphemous on a lower computer than mine, or if you have a better computer than mine, uh, this is to ensure uh, there is no uh, unfair advantage relative to what PC you bought and how you can just run the game. So this is just common 
uh, between all the runners. And this is available on live splits. So you just have to launch the game and launch, launch live split with this um, auto split. This only works in the 1.0.6 version though. So yeah, remember that the sigil on the bottom right is the indication that we are inside a loading screen, uh, which is the most important thing uh, for most of the glitches we're going to use. So we arrived at the first boss and we're going to be using the main damaging technique of the game, the up CC, which is just attack upwards, crouch, attack upwards, crouch. And as you can see, I'm pressing it to a relatively fast cycle. However, this uh, Warden is not uh, going to be a perfect Warden fight. A really good Warden fight is somewhere around 47, 46 seconds. This was a 50 seconds fight. Um, this was a morning run. I wasn't really paying attention to anything. But what's important is that I managed to get all my tricks and make this run sort, sort of a proof of concept of what the new route is so that uh, anyone can use it and uh, feel free to run the game. So here I will be mashing the Dio Gracias text on keyboard because it is much faster. So I'm using the space bar to mash and it just goes way, way faster. It saves about one to two seconds. Then it's just the holy line. So it's just basic movement. Uh, there's nothing more to it. Um, just don't get hit, uh, because getting hit uh, gives you a lot of hit lag. And that's it. So here I'm taking the Verdiales. Um, the Verdiales will be only useful at one po at two points in the run. It will be useful um, to kill the processioners in the Archcathedral rooftops, and it will be useful in the Crescenta fight. Before that, we use that to kill uh, Escribar, uh, as Escribar was active before the fight, so we could just spam the Verdiales and have Escribar die uh, before the fight starts. But now we will be skipping Escribar. So at what point I ask myself, is skipping Verdiales something? Because as I'm picking up Verdiales, there is like a th three to four seconds a stop where I can't do anything, but it's so useful on the Processioner and Crescenta fight that it's almost necessary that we pick it. So here you have some sort of stop, then you go through those two guys, and it's just regular holy line movement with some optimization, for example, just uh, making sure that you don't hit jumps sometimes hitting as less enemies as possible. Uh, this was a small mistake. I should have uh, air impulse of the cherub so that I wouldn't have grabbed the thing. Also, this is still 1.0.6, so you cannot skip cutscene. So this cutscene is mandatory. There is nothing you can do to it. Okay, we will be arriving at our, our new important skip, which is the IMC. IMC stands for Infinite Miracopa, and what we will be doing with that is that we will be um, augmenting our level, our sword level, uh, but on an infinite matter of way. Why is this important? Is that we have to face Tricenta and we have to eliminate a few enemies, and we want to make sure that the enemies can be killed in one hit. There are two jumpers that can uh, bother us. And Crescenta has a lot of health, and we want to make sure that we don't waste too much time uh, just hitting blunt uh, hits with our sword. How does the damage work? Uh, the sword, um, in the beginning of the game, the sword has a flat 10 damage. Every hit you do does 10 damage, because we are not going to take any sword upgrade and sword skills. Um, we just have regular hits, and all of them are 10 damage. Every time you take a sword level, you add four to your sword attack. So ideally, we want to have four sword levels so that we go from 10 to 26 damage. Uh, but I realized that going for three is still good uh, because 22 damage is manageable. The most important point is to be above 20 because one of the enemies we're going to face has 20 health and we want to be able to kill it in one hit. So, how does um, the IMC work? 
So as you can see, when I am entering the transition screen, I will be trying to hit the select uh, button, the map option. And if I'm doing it right, uh, I will be transitioning right, like right up here. I transition through the door while having the menu open. This is because uh, one of the most important thing in Blasphemous is that opening menus, closing menus, going back to the main menu, um, opening the map, uh, everything opens a small coroutine that makes the game continue for one or two frames. And if you manage to hit transition or to force the game to load something between, uh, during those one or two frames, you will be uh, able to store the fact that you opened the menu, or that you went back to a menu, or that you died, and everything like this can be stored. So right now, I'm having control of the penitent one while the menu is open. So what I will be doing is that I will be going to the altar and trigger the cutscenes that plays the first time you pick up an altar while having the menu open. And when I do that, I will be um, I will be triggering the cutscene and then I will be going back to the main menu. So this will launch the cutscene and launching the cutscene open uh, raises your uh, soul level by one. But the cutscene is not deactivated until it's finished and the, the prompt for you have gained a miracle per altar is displayed. So while doing that, I'm still gaining a sword level and going back to the main menu. So if I'm going back to the main menu, I can recharge the game and uh, continue and trigger the cutscene again. So this is what IMC is all about, is just triggering this cutscene over and over again. However, if you remember correctly, um, the f uh, you enter Albero from this uh, spot right here, and you will be going down and down here. Uh, about the menu storage, there is something that you should know, is that menu storage can happen in one of two ways. You can either have a good storage, which is, which is what I got right here. Good storage is when you enter and you keep the menu open while transitioning. Otherwise, um, you sometimes you go through a transition while having the menu open. But if you try to quit out um, from, the, from the map, the game just won't let you quit out of the map. This is a bad storage. And when you have a bad storage, you have to go back to the main menu and relaunch the game and then you will have the menu storage that will be kept open. Because what will happen now is that I will be going back to the altar while having the menu open. So I won't be able to see anything of what I'm doing. So to make sure that you understand, I will be having the sound and I'll be describing what I'm doing. So let's go back to the main menu and you will be hearing me speaking in French because during this run, at least this run live on stream and there are many French uh, speaking people that comes to my chat. So I'll be talking in French, but the rest of the video will be talking in English. So this is the going back to the main menu. And as you can hear, I'm st you can hear the sound effect from dashing. And on the top of the screen, you have the small Al Albero banner. And this lets you see what's happening in the background. So right here, I'm going to, to the right. And I want you to pay attention from the moment the sigil appears on the bottom right corner of what's going to happen. You will he be hearing dash, walk, walk, dash. I will be grabbing the ladder, going down the ladder a bit, jumping, uh, dashing again, going down the ladder, uh, sliding down the ladder, jumping, and then I know I will be entering. This is a navigation I'm doing mostly with sound. So as you can see, I was I did the two dash, the two slide downs, and um, the two dash, the two slide downs. I jumped from the ladder, I slide down again, and then I entered that. So now I will just have to be doing a dash and it will trigger the cutscene again. So this makes my sword level goes to two, with only one alter. Here is me talking. Sliding again. I'm entering there again. And for this run, I decided only to go with three sword level because I wanted to test it out. 
Turns out it works pretty great. Donc ça c'est normal. Que... Uh, and this is also why uh, my split went to gold split with uh, such a huge advance. It's because I usually don't go for a three sword level. I will always go for four. But since we don't have to go for the last son of the miracle, um, three sword level is more manageable than four. So then we will be going through some spaces. Our goal now is to go to the graveyard of the peaks and the safe point that there is near the shop. So those enemies can be dashed through the shield maiden, so you have to jump over them. You want to avoid grabbing ledges as most as possible. Here you have some optimization using the corpses to bounce off. I kind of missed that. Also here I do slashes just to just to avoid enemies and to move as fast as possible. And to avoid being bumped back by hitting enemies. Here's just some good uh, just some movement. And the moment we will be entering where the only three wizards is uh, when uh, things are going to happen. For example, right now, um, the fact that we deactivated the, the tutorials is one of the most important things because he would have had a tutorial about the, uh, about the wall climbing ability. So now we're going to be um, explaining the super jump glitch. So in 1.0.6 and in other version of the game, when you wall climb and you jump off of the wall climb, the game applies to you a small mini boost. It happens that if you grab a ledge during the jump where you have this small mini boost applied, um, when you are hanging from the ledge, you still have this the game remembering that you need to have this mini boost. And if you open this, um, the, the, the inventory during hanging from the ledge, the game will try to apply this speed mini boost to you every single frame. So by having the menu open, you can store vertical speed that you can release all at once by just letting go from the ledge, which is done by pressing down. So the most important thing here is that is to know that the longer you get you keep the pause menu open, the higher your jump will go. So here I'm going to be doing a super jump, but I'll need to be uh, really careful of how many uh, seconds I kept my menu open to be really careful about the height of the jump I will be having. And for that, I'm mostly using uh, the background music um, uh, because there is those um, piano notes uh, going on the background and I know I have somewhat of a thing it's not a hundred percent reliable because the movement I did in the previous screen uh, is really impactful on the on if I managed to get here or not so you have uh, you have I, I let only go I let go of two or three uh, piano notes to to go through that so So here, uh, this was a bit too much, but it still allowed me to go there. If you don't charge it enough, you want to go in underneath and then you can climb upwards. But the goal is to be above, is to be able to land right here without having the hard fall landing animation, uh, which, which saves about uh, some seconds, I, I don't know. Then here, this room is always the same. You want to jump over this guy, air impulse over, over this cage uh, so that you can grab this place. And then we will be using a new glitch that was uh, that I discovered way, way back ago. I think I discovered the wrong warp in 2021, maybe. Um, but the application for the wrong warp were only discovered by the Chinese community much later in something like 2022 and uh, used for world record in New Game Plus in 2023. For those who don't know, by the way, the Chinese community is super active on Blasphemous. Unfortunately, they don't have their research available on YouTube or Twitch, 
because most of the people using uh, the internet in this country prefer using their own uh, social media, which is most of the time Billy Billy. So yeah, I can I could ha add some links to uh, some of the video they did. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be dying and I want to die while going back to the main menu. So as I explained before, there is this, uh, the fact that when going back to the main menu, the game will still continue for some frames. So as you can see here, I'm just letting, going down. And now, as you can see, there is, there is the menu that is opening. So as the menu is opening, I'm going back to the main menu and by selecting going back to the main menu, the game will continue for a few frames. And during those few frames, uh, my character will die. So as you can see uh, here, let me just go back a bit. And you will hear the death animation sound. Let's go, first try. So here you have the Exoplaris Excommunicationist appearing over the main menu screen. So I can load my save file. But by pressing a button here, the game will respawn um, in an other instance of the game. There, there will be, like here I can play the game, but I don't have any save file loaded. Uh, so this is a state we call the limbo state, because this is... If, if a, a save file is sort of a plane of existence, um, this is outside of the planes of existence. This is outside of the save file. So this is uh, the limbo state. And what I want to do is to attain a certain spot in the limbo state and then recharge my save file. So the save file would be teleported to a specific point that is determined by the limbo state. So here is the graveyard of the peace. And as you can see here, I'm transitioning uh, a screen in the limbo state. And the, the, the screen I'm entering right here is the, um, the elevator screen with the first arena on the left, uh, where you have the, um, the, 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 the pearl that lets you enter the arena. You have the um, sword uh, heart, uh, where you need to bleed on the top right corner and you have the entrance to uh, Our Lady of the Six Sorrow in some spot too. But more importantly, there is an entrance that is the shortcut from our coven, uh, the Covent of Our Lady of the Child Visage to back to uh, the Graveyard of the Peaks. And by entering from the entrance of Graveyard of the Peaks and loading back uh, the graveyard of the peak save file, the game will place us right on top of that room, which is the entrance to the Covenant of Our Lady of the Child Visage. So this allow me to skip everything uh, from the climb of the graveyard of the peaks. Plus, you skip also the cutscene of Ezra's talking about you when you enter the Covenant of Our Lady of the Child Visage. And this cinematic is 25 seconds, so this saves maybe a bit more than a minute. It's a, at least it saves 30, 35 seconds, but it can be much, much more. But this is a super important glitch because it saves lots of platforming, lots of errors that you can do. So it's one of the most broken things that we added, that I've added to this run. So it's super powerful. Then uh, it's going to be. Ça, le premier trick que trouvé. That's just me talking uh, back in the video. Then it's just going to be classic uh, blasphemous 80% uh, as we know of. Uh, I'll be going over the glitch that we're about to see. But this was already known uh, back in 2019. So those two enemies are the reason that we want 20 uh, damage. Plus, we will have. Um, we will have Crescenta later. So right now I'm doing, I'm trying to do a super zip. I will fail the first one, uh, which is why this run is only a proof of concept. If I manage to get that, uh, it would have been able to go under 13 minutes, I think. So uh, how does the super zip works? The super zip is a super jump that you want to trigger the frame uh, that you are going 
to climb onto a ledge. Because when climbing onto a ledge, the game will deactivate uh, the penitent one collisions. And because you deactivate the penitent one collisions while having infinite upward speed, uh, you can just go straight up uh, without bothering about walls or anything. And in this room particularly, this allows you to go above the uh, Our Lady of the Child Visage fight and all the way back to uh, the key to the High Pink entrance, which lets you pick up a mask, even a health upgrade. And uh, also you then can go back to the High Walls uh, to to just go straight to the end of the game. This is the most important sequence break that was found pretty early on, but it's super powerful. So here I'll be doing a six. As you can see, I failed the first one and I bumped my head into the ceiling. But then I will be succeeding to go upwards and just go for that. You can, there, there is a strat where in the previous room where you try to do a super zip for, I count, eight seconds on the first one. Uh, and then I kill the cauldron powering lady uh, and do six second uh, super zip off of the, the first uh, thing, which is a bit fast, slower, but more consistent. Then it's pretty classic. We are going to pick up a first mask because we are going to be duplicating masks after that. So we want to pick up this mask. Um, in Y.2.6, uh, this cinematic does not trigger for some reason, so we take those. And then uh, we will be taking this elevator. Fortunately, you don't need the key to the eye peaks to go um, through that elevator. You only need uh, it to ride it on the way up, not on the way down. So that's a good thing. Here I'll just go straight forward. Um, there will be the fight against the two uh, two Warden of the Brotherhood. But um, the Warden of the Brotherhood is not a very difficult fight. And now that we have about two, more than two times our power that we have in the previous fight, the fight, this is going to be really easy. You can kill it before it attacks. Um, you can have a way better fight if those two guys decide to jump and to stack each other on the same place because of two reasons. First, you're going to damage both at the same time. Second, um, in 1.0.6 and I think until 2.0.22, uh, it was patched in 3.0.32, the Wounds of Event, the um, Strife and Ruin patch uh, corrected that. But before the Strife and Ruin patch, when you hit an enemy in the air, you double the amount of damage of both uh, done on both enemies and this works for the upward slash and this works for the upward slash too So doing up CC on two enemies does double the damage on both enemies So you just melt them and it's super powerful. Unfortunately, I didn't have that in this site But uh, do know that is something that's really important This is something that made the Tres Augustias fight a breeze in any version of the game prior to 3.0.32 but after 3.0.32, uh, Tres Augustias became a hell of a fight because the, the enemies had so much more HP uh, because of that glitch bait patch. And we call, there is no name for that glitch, it's called, mainly called Air Damage Multiplier. Okay, so here it's just basic movement, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, I do use the time that I'm forced onto some moving plats uh, to just recharge everything, fervor, health, and stuff. Okay, and here I'll be using three glitch uh, back to back. The first one is levitation. Levitation is super simple. You just open the menu before striking a wall. And if you did, if you did that correctly, you will just be able to levitate uh, horizontally. Then I'll be doing a super jump of the fact that I was levitating onto a wall. And then I will do an other glitch called item catching. Uh, it's not really a glitch, it's more of an exploit. But item catching works that if you are attacking in the air, attacking in the air makes you enter a briefly 
a, a brief window of a special state where you can interact with the item on the ground. Uh, this includes the lever. So as I'm rising up, I don't have to wait all the way back of going down. I will be strictly interacting with the lever uh, up ahead. So here I'm charging the super jump, going up, and then catching the lever as soon as possible. This is, this is doable in current patch, uh, as you can do an uppercut, start a dive, and during the dive you can interact with the lever. It's called the Melchiades skip, and it takes profit of the item catch. Then I'll be going up and do the deposit of the two first masks I picked up. It's super important that you save and quit out of the Melchiades mask room, uh, because if you do walk out of the room, it will trigger the cutscene and the mask won't be able to be duplicated. So here, that's why the Verdialis is so important. It's for spe this specific enemies. And um, here is a small uh, optimization, but you need to be able to recharge your favor all the way to have two Verdialis by the time you come to the spot uh, to the second time. So you, that's why you saw me bleed myself. Uh, I tried to bleed myself uh, through door transition so that you skip the animation. Uh, you can do that with flasks too. I did use that at the beginning of the run to use the flask more quickly. So here I go back, this duplicates the second mask, which I already deposited. Uh, then I will be coming back to the, to the elevator, deposit the third mask. This will count as uh, as if I put three masks into the bowl, and this will allow me to access the end of the game. So here, nothing too major, just doing some good placement to kill the processioner. Just be careful about those angels because those guys uh, take about three quarters of your health away in one hit. So just be sure to, to slide under them. So now it's just elevator thingies. And then we will enter the Crescenta fight. So the Crescenta fight is what makes this run really cool is that you still have to go through Crescenta, which is maybe one of the most hard bosses in the game. And the I mean, it's one of the less... It's manipulable, but you still have to respect her in many ways. Uh, so the first phase of the, the, first, uh, phase of the Crescenta fight is somewhat uh, controllable. The thing is, when you're close to her, she will try to attack you and to uh, uh, with the attack that you can parry. When you attack her back, you want to see if she is sliding backwards when you are hitting her. If she is sliding backwards when you are hitting her, this means she will do the flip uh, back to the edge of the screen after that. During the, all the time that she's doing the, the flip to the edge of the screen, you can up-CC her. And because of the abscesses, this will slow down the, the, the backflips that she will be doing, and you can have a lot of damage out of that. Otherwise, she will be doing her attacks towards you uh, that you can parry. Do know that when you parry an attack and attack her back, she will move forward a bit. And if you stay in the same spot, by moving forward every now and then, uh, she, will end, she will end inside your hitbox, and this will bump you back, and then you will be out of the rhythm, and she will be able to wreck you and kill you in two hits. Also, do be careful that when she reaches 60% um, of her health, so about this spot right here, when she goes under this spot, she will enter phase 2, where she starts by guarding uh, with her sword like this, there will be a lightning coming down to her, and this lightning can hit you and do a ton of damage. It does about 50% of your current health. So be uh, really careful about that. So as you can see, she will start the fight by just going back. So I take this, 
Here, I just hit her and I saw that she was sliding backward. So I immediately start up CCing because I know she will be doing all of the backflip. And this can allow me to melt about 15% of her health in one, just in one go. So then Perry, I see that she does not move forward. So I just move to the left a bit. And I know that uh, she has a lot of iframes, so I don't bother up CCing. I know that when she's trying to hit, I can go for one attack at dead guard uh, to cancel the attack and then just hit things. Also, it's not it's no use to use uh, virtuous reposts in this fight as it doesn't have any use against Crescenta and it doesn't do extra damage. So unfortunately, this could have been a cool way to just increase the repost damage, but uh, it's not uh, it's not that useful. So as you can see, I'm still moving uh, left a bit because I know that I'm going. Cl uh, I'm getting closer to the forty percent of health uh, away. So she, she's now really close to phase transition. So I don't want to get hit by the lightning because I don't have uh, much health and I don't have any healing left. So here she's. Uh, I, I was wondering if she's go she was going to attack here, but as I see her preparing her attack. I'm taking time to move to the left, and I know that after this attack, she's 100% going to face transition. So she is far away from me, so I'm not getting hit by this lightning, but do be careful because this lightning, um, this hitbox goes almost all the way to this pillar right here. It's a super big hitbox, uh, which can be really deceiving uh, sometimes. So after phase transitioning, she will always disappear. And when she disappears is when the phase two nightmare starts. Because phase two nightmares, she's always going to be going back and forth uh, around the arena. You want to be using Verdiales and you want her to do this attack as less as possible, but you can manipulate the place she will reappear. And by knowing where she will reappear, you can prepare yourself to do just some huge up CCs um, to get down her health. Unfortunately, I was kind of sloppy in this fight and my up CC weren't as good as I expected. I could have killed her in way fa way better times, but you'll see what I, uh, what I mean by manipulating where she can reappear. So in the beginning, uh, I think it's until she gets down to 30% of her health, she will always do two sideways attack and then she'll do a diagonal one. So the sideways attack, you can parry the first one and use a Verdiales uh, during the second one because the Verdiales is going to make you completely invulnerable, so she will just go through you, uh, but she will have to go through the Verdiales, which, is, which will still do a bit of damage. Uh, if you can have two hits, it's bad. Three hits of Verdiales is good. Four hits is really good. So by positioning, I have not no visual cue yet, but when you know where to position yourself, you can have a Virgilis just stay in one spot, which uh, which can have her uh, take multiple hits when she appears right now. So yeah, it's a bit RNG and it's a bit um, tricky to, to have, but that's the way I kind of ma manipulate this specific part, part of the fight. So here, my Virgilis was a bit uh, slow. And then um, when she will do the diagonal strike, if you don't move, she will be coming down towards you and hit you in this specific spot. So if you stay in one place, when you see her appear, you can jump and do two hits. And those two hits will hit her and she will not hit you. OK, and then um, here is the important part. When she. Um, after she did the diagonal strike, she will look, uh, the, the AI of Crescenta will try to locate where you are and the side of a response point, uh, a response point based of the position you were in. And if you are close to that pillar, you want to have the head of the penitent be within this pillar, she will appear right here. So you have a, uh, an audio cue of her reappearing. When you, once you hear this audio cue, you can then step a bit forward to be in up CC position and 
then just start FCCing because this is the window where you have the most, uh, where you can have the most damage off. Because then, after the, this uh, window, she can decide whether she wants to attack you, whether she wants to backflip, or whether she wants to disappear again and just go over all of the cycle. So here I position myself, I hear the thing, and I start doing FCC. Then she attacks me, so that's good, and then it's the fight all over again. So here I reposition myself to manipulate where she will reappear. And then she starts backflipping. Backflipping is pretty un uncommon, but it's really good because uh, if you can uh, have benefit, if you can take some profit of the, the backflip, it's really good. This was a super rare fight and I did not manage to get a good thing out of it. And also, now that she's under 30% of her health somewhat, when she's getting pretty close to death, uh, when she disappears, she can switch from going two sideways and one diagonal to do sideways, diagonal, sideways, sideways, diagonal. Uh, if she does that, if you parry her when she's doing a diagonal, she can immediately uh, start a new attack. And this is super dangerous. You don't want to, you do not want to parry her when she's doing diagonal strikes. But here is all the manipulation thingy. She kind of only did the um, sideways, sideways diagonal. Oh no, this is a sideways uh, diagonal, sideways, sideways diagonal. Here I position my safe badly, and this is the Crescenta fight. This is the most difficult part of the run, uh, as you, there are many opportunities for you to die. But there are many, many things to know. You just have to train this fight a lot. And uh, this will allow you to, to get better and better at this game. Do know that after this patch, uh, after 2.0.22, they completely revamped the AI of Crescenta and the way she, be, uh, she behaves. So this is only useful in 1.0 version of the game. After the MNC dash patch, uh, she's not at all the same. Okay, then we are going to be uh, doing the Escribar skip. So we will be completely skipping the last boss of the game and go straight to the end. This is done by performing a wrong warp. So you've already seen, uh, and I've already explained how the wrong warp works. You need to enter the limbo state, so you need to quit out the game. And during the small quit out window, uh, where the game will still continue to work uh, behind, you, uh, your your character needs to enter a kill plane or something like this. And then you will enter the limbo state. And during the limbo state, you want to you want to enter a specific room and recharge your save file uh, at the specific time. So here I'm, I missed uh, the, first the first opportunity I have to enter Limbo, but right now I managed to do it. So the Limbo state is going to put me at the safe point of the Arch Cathedral rooftops, and I will be entering the final boss room, and I will be reloading my save file at the same time I as, as I am entering the final boss room. So as you can, could have seen in the small band upwards, I was climbing the stairs. And now I'm just looking for the bottom right corner for the CG to appear. As I see the sigil, I'm just recharging the, the game. This puts me after the boss fight. The boss is still active, but I can still access the end of the game because it's just a matter of cutscenes now. So right now you just have a small dialogue with Theogracias. Uh, you can use the spacebar to mash faster. Then you can jump here. By just mashing really quickly, you can have this sort of high jump, which lets you move faster on the Mount of Ash. And once you, you cross the second pillar, the penitent will start to go down. And as you're going down, uh, when you see the final fade out, this is time. And this is how you do Blasphemous any percent with glitches. Uh, without glitches, it's much more complicated, and uh, the the more recent the patch is, the more the, the more the techniques get completely different. 
The combat overall is a bit of the same, but the movement and everything else uh, gets much more different um, than that. Anyways, the, the goal of this was to be able to describe uh, what I learned from this game, what I know uh, as of its glitches, its techniques, and uh, the boss's behavior, and how to manipulate, and how to play it correctly, and to understand what's happening on the background. So I hope this was useful to you. I hope uh, you liked that. If you want to see Blasphemous content, uh, you can follow this channel or follow my Twitch channel that will be linked in the description. And um, all of that, uh, uh, all of that I do Blasphemous, I do other Metroidvanias. Obviously I'll be doing a lot of Blasphemous too, and uh, I hope you, you enjoyed and I see you in a bit. See ya!